Greetings, folks. Greetings to you. Thank you for listening and welcome to the 300th episode of the Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show by, for, and about small businessing here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And here in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. 300. That's exciting. Congrats, man. Yeah. Yeah. Congrats good. to you, too. It's like a movie, like, right? 300, wasn't that a... a the, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, there was. was. Yeah, there's a model <laughs> yeah, car stuff. of a 300. There's a lot of 300s out there. Lots yeah. of 300s. It's a great milestone, uh, you know, kind of halfway through six years of, or our sixth year of doing this. Uh, it's terrific. It's been a great education for me, hopefully for you listening at your office or at home as well. And uh, we thought we would talk about some of those kind of overarching concepts that have stuck with Dave and I today before we get into a great upcoming interview that we've got uh, this week as well. Yeah, absolutely. So normally, you know, this show is about you. We'll do this little segment about us. It's specifically about some of the things that Shannon and I have learned, as he said. If there's something, we are not going to explore these. We're, we're merely going to sort of share our things that we have learned and, and that have benefited us from doing this show. If there's something here that resonates with you, email us, feedback at businessshow.co. Let us know, and then we will take an episode or a segment of an episode and dedicate it to exploring one or more of these topics in depth. Sound good? Deal? Deal. Yeah, that's awesome. Good. Why don't you start, man? What's uh, what's your first thing that you've got on the list? Yeah, so I picked kind of five things because I otherwise I we'll would never talk for get hours. to all five of them. Yes, yeah, right. never get it. So uh, one of the biggest things I've learned of, of talking to hundreds of guests and all these topics is that support is available. You know, many times in my uh, small business career, I've really felt alone, and I wished. I would have known about more resources like uh, this podcast, small business show, uh, small business groups, groups on LinkedIn, advisory boards, uh, mentors, coaches, get involved in your small business community. However, whatever way you're comfortable with, because even though you may not need someone to talk to or get tips and advice from today, certainly it's going to come a time when you, when you, would like something uh, or some help. And so th there's just all kinds of support out there. And we've talked about so many different uh, ways to, that you can get it. Don't forget it, that it's out there for you. Yeah, for sure. That was, that was one of the things on my list too, is, uh, you know, a few years ago I was having a, a rough spot with one of my businesses and really needed that board and didn't have it. And I reached out to score and, oh, yeah. and we talked yeah. about it on the show here. It was, yeah. it was, it, I mean, the few months that I met with the, my advisors at score changed everything because it just allowed me to zoom out a little bit on my business. So yeah, it, this is, it's a, it's a very valuable lesson and, and it feeds into, you know, I, I've often subscribed, but not necessarily practiced the philosophy of that, which is monitored is managed. And, and score really helped remind me of that. But, you know, we talk about it in a lot of different ways. You, you, your favorite, my favorite piece of advice from you is check your bank balance every day, right? Those kinds yep. of things. <laughs> when you're monitoring things, you will naturally lean toward managing them because you're seeing them regularly. It's easy to put your head. It's easy for me to put my head in the sand and just plow forward. And sometimes you need that kind of optimism, yeah. but, but it can be a, a, a danger to your business. And, and of course, therefore to you. So yeah, that, that, um, that, that's well, that a good measurable one. thing is, is so important because often what I've realized in my life, uh, is that oftentimes I don't want to measure it because I may not be happy with what it tells me. Well, that's it. Yeah. But, but <laughs> right? you know, okay. So that takes me to, to, to my next one, which is again, another favorite avoid, uh, fear-based decisions, right? Th that yeah. is a fear-based decision right there. Like of deciding <laughs> not to look at the data because you might not like what it's about yeah. to tell you, but it's yep. valuable, right? So, oh, yeah. you know, that, that's, sure. um, that, th that's been another huge one and really fit all fits in together and talking, you know, coming back to your first one, talking to your trusted board, whatever it is that comprises that. And it really can be, formed from a lot of different things forces us to forces me anyway 
to confront those things as opposed to just yes. skipping by. Like, ah, I, I, I'm good at managing cash flow. Like, ah, I can, I'll get it. It's fine. It's fine. It's like, well, but yeah, but you have a systemic problem, sir. You need to address right. this, right? So yeah. It's yeah. Good. yeah. 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 That's very good. It's good. Uh, my next one is, you know, we, te- we listen to so many great stories on this show and I've just come to realize how important and what a great opportunity story is. It's critical, not just for your customers, but also for your employees and maybe most importantly for yourself. You know, the story of your business, the why, uh, it, it's crucial to cultivate and share as much as you can. Um, and it also helps program yourself and, you know, builds up your authenticity, helps create cre- credibility don't neglect the story of your business. And if you don't think you have a good one, create it. It's, it's also your opportunity because you get to make it. You, you know, as a small business owner, you're creating your story is the first step in leading a charmed life, which we talk about on the show all the time. Uh, you know, cr- create your story, wrap yourself around the story, you know, the, the, the myth, if you will, of, of will of what you're doing, why you're in business, um, get some help if you need it to create that good narrative. Um, and a great way to share your story and build credibility. Come on this podcast, absolutely Be back at business co share your story. You'll, you'll enjoy it. You'll benefit. You'll have a piece of marketing material that you can share with your customers. Your employees will enjoy hearing you on the show. Reach out to us and come on and tell us your story. We need to get better. I need to get better about that. But I think collectively you and I could, could be better about going and being guests on other podcasts too and telling yeah, our that's story. That's true. Right. You know, yeah, yep. that is, that's a good point. Um, yep. The value of taking action is really uh, something you know, I look back and I say, well, I've always known the value of it, but we, because again, that which is monitored is managed. We talk about the value of taking action, the value of small business sing all the time. I got over the idea of ideas. We have listened to so many of you come on here and tell your stories about how you had an idea, but really it's the action that you took that made that idea into the thing that is yours. And even some of you that have come on and have had an idea that really isn't all that unique and quite frankly, isn't all that great. It doesn't really matter. You've taken it in your direction. Even if you saw someone else doing it, you did your spin on it because that's what we as humans do and made it into your own thing. So don't worry. One of the lessons that I've learned is don't worry about waiting for the great idea Take an idea that resonates with you that you feel is great and then run with it because that's where the value is going to be with you doing the running. And if you're not excited about the idea, even if you stole the idea or are copying the idea from somebody else, it's okay. If you can get into it, that's the most important thing. And and that's really, you know, one of the things I've taken away is and I've even applied that to my existing businesses. Like, wait, you know, sure. I do like this. I, you know, I'm not even though I've been doing this for 20 years or whatever, I, I still like it. Like there's there's something to do here. So, yeah. Yeah. The 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 idea of action uh, is, I think, the most important uh, thing right there. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. It's powerful. Yeah. But that kind of leads me to one of mine that you, you say this all the time, you know, every business in, is in the customer service business. Mm. Learn how to, how to give great customer service. If, if you can learn that one trait, you can take an average idea or an idea someone else is implementing terribly and you can create an incredible business around it. But if you, Learn the fundamental basic parts of how to make your customers happy and how to turn problem situations, you know, or problem customers into loyal, uh, you know, customers that will tell everybody about your business. That single trait can be the foundation for success. Uh, I mean, I can't put too fine a point on it because you're going to then teach your employees. You're going to talk, you're going to use those skills throughout your organization and, you know, learning, go, go back to in our archives at business show.co and just search for customer service. We've done a ton of episodes on it because it's so important. Uh, and, you know, learn how to give great customer service and it will pay back exponentially throughout your life. Yeah. 
Yeah, I've certainly gotten, I've always seen the value in it, but I've gotten better at it again, just because we're talking about it here. Yeah. We, we are doing, we are not hitting our mission here, Shannon, because we are defaulting to the thing that we normally do. We are teaching, right? And, and instead of just saying, here's what I've taken out of this, it's like, let oh, me well, teach you how to, no, it's fine. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> yeah. But one thing that I have to, to really try and focus selfishly for a minute here. One thing that this show, that I have gotten out of doing this show is reminding myself that I'm good at this. Every oh, day is good. not a fantastic day in business, right? In fact, right. you know, there, there are those things that will shake your confidence, certainly shake mine. The, you know, you'll have periods of time, not even just days, but perhaps months, maybe even a year or two where things just aren't going. Things maybe aren't growing the way you want to. And talking about it here and listening to other business owners and talking with all of you, it really has taught me that I'm, I'm good at this. I'm not great. I, I have plenty of things to learn. The more I learn, the more I know I need to learn. And that's like perhaps the most valuable thing is listening to all the lessons that everybody brings. It's like, wow, I, I, I'm good at this, but I can learn a lot more and opening that up. But, but really that confidence that comes with helping others has really helped me learn more about my own skill set, And, and that obviously you know, improves my game too for a yeah, huge. That's great. Yeah. 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 That's really good. And you know, that powering through those days that aren't that great or weeks or months uh, <laughs> that aren't yes. that great. You know, what, what I'm on my list is all about resilience and grit. You know, you need resilience and grit to, to persevere as a small business owner. And we often on the show, we have to Dave and I have to kind of pull ourselves back down from some of these lofty things we talk about because we can look at our life, you know, backwards now. So we have the the benefit of, you know, kind of looking at thing how great this was, but you kind of gloss over a lot often that. So it, it's important to understand that it, it is going to be hard. The charmed life has deep lows and soaring highs. So you know, hopefully you get more of those soaring highs and, and things do tend to even out over time, but you got to understand and embrace the fact that you're going to have to be resilient. You're going to have to power through, learn tricks and, and uh, techniques to, uh, to get through those tough times because there are better times ahead. If you stop during the tough times, you'll never, or you'll always regret it. In my opinion, mm -hmm. if I had stopped that would have been my story. You know, I've talked on the show a lot about some, you know, big, huge mistakes in my life in business life. You know, I made a million dollar mistake one morning. And if I had stopped after that and not come back and come through that other side of that, I don't know that I would be here today talking about this. No, you probably have a day just, job, man. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. God, don't scare me like that. You know, no, that's and, the and good thing to scare right. yourself with, right? Like what yeah. well, you yeah. definitely yeah. wouldn't have just sat there and not earned an income, right? You would have figured out maybe take a chapter 11, yes. you know, oh, whatever yeah. it is, and Something. then yeah. go get a day job because you don't have the capital anymore to, you know, fund a business. And, and yeah. there you go. You know, you provide for your family, provide for yourself. And that's what you do. And there's not, there's nothing inherently wrong with that. But the story that no. you told yes. and therefore the story you lived is a better story. <laughs> I would agree. 100%. I think so. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you're right. It yeah, takes that so. resilience and grit. Yeah, man. It does. Yeah. 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 So. yeah. I um That's yeah. Great. No, it's good. I I could go on and on. Do you have one last one? Shannon? I do have one. All right. One that I think is very important, maybe the most important if you're thinking about starting a small business just getting going or you know, you're on the fence, don't want to leave your day job or corporate job or whatever. The thing I've I've learned from this show is there's less risk than you think. Oh yeah. Okay. Relying on a paycheck from someone else is super risky. You don't know. You're not a, you may not even been in control. You could get downsized. We could have a pandemic and you don't know what's going to happen, right? The way well, I like to look at that is if you started a small business, would you want to have just one customer or would you want to have 10 customers? Yeah, and, that's really good. Right. Yep. And if, because yeah. if you're working for somebody else, yeah, there's some laws to protect you that don't exist for your customers, you know, versus your employer, but you still have just the one customer is really yep. what it is. 
Yeah, that's right. So you could have thousands of customers paying you. Uh, and, you know, I, I come back to relying on yourself to create revenue streams is way less risky than relying on someone else to give you a paycheck and way more beneficial. And, and, uh, the upside you know, is, the unlimited. yeah, the upside is, is, uh, it's unbelievable, unbelievable. Uh, and now I think looking at technology and, you know, I, I can remember trying to start companies and trying to figure out how are we going to accept payments? How, how do we get this money? Right. Right. And it, every creating revenue streams has never been more accessible. And, and I, I want to, accessible is, is the right word. At first I put never been, you know, easier, but it's not easy. There's all the kinds of hoops to jump through, but it's accessible. Uh, and, and you can definitely do it. Uh, and, and so just, it, again, it's a lot less risky than everyone else tells you Yeah. and other people look, who's advice, look, who's telling you it's risky. There are, the, is it another small business owner? Probably not. It's no. probably someone that's getting a paycheck. And you know, that's the fine. Only, the only other small business owner that might tell you it's risky is someone that you're about to compete directly with. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, that's but, true. you know, or, and that's, or someone who's failed and stopped and didn't have that resilience to power through. Fair. So their whole life story is about, oh, we tried this. It didn't work. It's, it's too, you know, small businesses don't work. I, and I know a few people like that. They're awesome people, but they're part of that story. It's like, oh, I started a gym and it failed and we couldn't figure out how to make it work. So now I sell medical equipment. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's cool. But I don't consider that person an advisor to, you know, a, a potential small business owner. Take the risk. There's never going to be a better time than today. Well, you, there is, you know, but it, it already passed. It was yesterday. It did. So yeah, yeah take it today. That's right. Turn off your TV. I was just talking to a, per, I have a, a group of people on Facebook related to my handbag business that I mentor. And, you know, this person was asking about uh, how do I make this work by the time I get home and this and kids and other, and I say, well, you, you know, don't ever turn your television on and, you know, don't sit on the couch, you know, sit at the table and get to take a couple hours at night. You're going to be tired, but that's how, I mean, that's how we started deals on the web. Absolutely. You know, we got going, uh, we started getting things going. Renee, my wife, she managed, she did coupons. I did deals. And we did that for a year before we had any income enough to hire somebody to do a part-time. We didn't make any money, but we had somebody doing it for us and building the foundation of right. a future business that was tremendous for, for both of us. Yeah, no, it's true. That, that is perhaps the best piece of advice that you will ever get in starting a small business is turn off your TV. Uh, it is, uh, yes. it's, it's not easy, but it is true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it yeah, is yeah. true. It is. It is true. But so yeah. those are my top fives. You know, I like we could it, have man. top 50 and all that kind of stuff. But uh, in, again, if there's anything you'd like us to expand on that you heard today, if there's things that you have learned that you'd like to share with us, I could tell you there, there are not two, two people in the world that would be happier to hear from you. Feedback at businessshow.co uh, to let us know what you've learned from this show and what you would like to learn. There you go. Well, I have two sponsors to talk about, and the first one is something you definitely are going to want to learn about, and that is our friends at Build HR, right? Look, we all know that we have to do HR-related tasks and be the HR department for our, run, for our businesses and also run our businesses, right? So why not get an actual HR department to be your partner without spending time and money to hire a full or even part-time employee? That's what Build HR is and does. In fact, we've had the way we found Build HR and the way they found us, we had Kelly, the founder of Build HR, on the show here. She is your HR nerd, I say that because I'm a nerd, but I'm not an HR nerd. I'm a tech nerd, right? I'm in some cases a business nerd. I'm definitely not an HR nerd. You want nerds on your team and build HR is going to be your HR partner, your HR nerd. They're the ones you want on your side. They work with you to meet your exact needs and plans start as low as just $99 a month. So leave HR to build HR and focus on what matters most, your business. In fact, you can even text Build HR right now to learn more. Text 720-513-2474. That's 720-513-2474. And we'll have it linked in the show notes too, so that you can get it from there at businessshow.co. Uh, 
and you can save your business from legal liability and make your life easier. You can also visit them at yourhrsource.com. Our thanks to Build HR for sponsoring this episode. Next up is Text Expander at textexpander.com slash podcast. Another fantastic resource for you. We just talked about how important it is to learn how to give great customer service. We are going to give you a tool to use right now, and it is Text Expander. In fact, if you go to textexpander.com slash podcast, you will get 20% off your first year. Text Expander is perhaps the most valuable tool I use for giving great customer service because I like to be both efficient and accurate and comprehensive with people. Those three things often don't fit together. You kind of have to choose at most two, right? Well, not with Text Expander because what I get to do is write out the full response that I want to give to people that have a certain question or a certain query or are in a certain position. But I don't want it to be exactly the same for everybody. And Text Expander lets me customize my response, but it also lets me just put it in a spot where I'm going to find it when I need it, as opposed to digging through my outbox saying, or my sent box saying, oh yeah, I know I've written something like this before. Who was it that I sent it to? Like that's, that's a great idea because something you've already written is probably a better place to start than just from scratch, but you don't want to have to spend the time finding it. You don't want to have to spend the time tweaking it. Text expander takes care of all of that for you. And you can share the snippets that you create in text expander with your entire team. So everybody gets the benefits of these great, well-crafted things that you and your company are putting together. So go check it out. Textexpander.com slash podcast. And our thanks to text expander for sponsoring this episode. All right, Shannon. Well, half of 300 episode, the 300th episode, we've already done half <laughs> of 300 right. episodes, but half of the 300th, ep 300th episode is in, uh, in the can as, as we like to say, I'm ready to get the other half going with this great interview. Too. We have a great interview today and it it's, I think it's about something we all love and we would love the, uh, idea of creating a small business around it. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you what the product is, but uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, talking to Chelsea Martin today. It's going to be All great. Right. Well, he is Shannon Jean. I am Dave Hamilton. And this is episode 300 of the Small Business Show. We don't do things the cost effective way because it will not be the cost effective way. If you do something the cheap way, you will end up paying more than what the expensive way was. And I say that in uh, various ways from uh, machinery, equipment to website development. Um, you know, there's so many times we cut corners because in all fairness, you're a small company, you're trying to save money, you're trying to get out there. And we, we did that so many times and what would happen is it wouldn't be it wouldn't be good and it would whatever it was whether it's our website or our equipment it and it breaks down and then so not only did you spend the money on it but now you have to spend the money to buy the thing that you didn't want to spend the money on in the first place so you've spent even more money Hey, Dave, you know, I have this uh, philosophy that if you want people to remember your name, you need to feed them, give them, give them food, right? Well, yeah, that's totally uh, true. Well, like yeah. drinks help too, but, drinks, but food, yeah, drinks, food's I, a good place to start. Yeah, we're all on those things. So uh, I'm really excited. Our guest today has built a business around making a great impression on your current and your or potential customers with branded boxes of goodness that'll put a smile on everybody's face. Uh, Chelsea Martin, she's the co-owner of Nom's bake shop where they specialize in connecting you with your customers on an entirely different level than standard marketing techniques. And since we all love cookies, I'm especially interested in learning about how they created a business around something so important to all of us. So Chelsea, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Yeah, it's cool. What an awesome business to to start. You know, that's, that's really great. Um, so let's talk about how you guys came up with the idea for Noms and maybe even more important since we love action so much on this show. What actions did you take to move Noms from an idea to an actual business? 
Oh, man. Okay. So it is very interesting because we are a family-owned business, uh, which is um, an interesting dynamic in itself. But well, We're going to talk, talk about that, too. Yeah. yeah. So um, this actually didn't start necessarily because we all came together and said, hey, well, one, we did not all come together and say, hey, let's all work together. But, but we definitely came all together um, or didn't come together because we said, let's begin a company together. It actually was more of a series of different events that kind of all unfolded that led us down this journey. And so um, if we go back a little bit, you know, in about 2014, my husband and I, or husband now, so a uh, spoiler alert, uh, we were dating and he he and I were kind of meeting, you know, you meet the family. And so I was meeting his family, he was meeting mine. And he was going on a vacation with my family and we were doing like a camping lake type of trip, something like that. And his family, uh, his father and mother had sent a basket or a gift basket of baked goodies that his dad had actually baked. And when they did that, I kind of learned that his father, who is a retired computer programmer, nothing to do with baking, but as just kind of a side hobby, he really liked to tinker around with recipes and refine them and make them even better. And so my husband and his sisters kind of grew up with this as just a total hobby that his dad would do. He would bake them and, of course, have excess and he would bring them to their sporting events. And he would also make, you know, fun holiday baskets for the neighbors, things like that. Just just completely not nothing to do with selling them. But he did become known, you know, from my husband's, uh, you know, like sp the sporting events and like uh, team players as like the cookie man, right? He was, or is he going to bring cookies to this event? Or the neighbors would, it's you know. a good ask, person to be known as. Right? Yeah. Not, not a bad cookie reputation man. for sure. So, um, so I kind of got to know that side of him because he had brought this gift basket to our family. And so it was nothing new for my husband, Trevor, um, or his sisters, Andy and Allison. Um, but it was nothing new for them. But of course, it was new for us. So when we, you know, tasted these cookies and they were amazing, there was nothing new to my husband. He wasn't like, oh, wow, like the reaction was incredible because he was just so used to it. And I kind of make a joke about him, him and his sisters being recalibrated to what a good cookie is because to, to them, it's normal. To us, it's amazing, you know. And uh, so my my family on on my side, my parents are business owners and I make jokes about them kind of going you know, one, two world domination. And so they, of course, tried these cookies and are like, you should sell them. And, you know, that's one of those things where if you make jewelry as a hobby and it's cute, people are like, you should sell this. If you do anything that's kind of a hobby that you're good at, people always say that. So nobody took it totally seriously, but we did decide, um, actually, my husband's father, he did kind of just start to uh, make the cookies and sell them at my parents' business and then also like local call centers and farmers markets just completely as a hobby, something to do now that he's retired. Nice. And my husband helped him with that, like get started, get the packaging, you know, just little things like that. And from that, I think the reaction there is what really drove us to consider this being a company. Because before it's, oh, my girlfriend's parents think you make good cookies or the neighbors think you make good cookies. But that doesn't have the same, it doesn't resonate the same as, you know, hundreds of strangers. And so seeing that continuous reaction uh, really started to get the attention of my husband. And my husband, who is an entrepreneur through and through, and it's in his blood, he started to see an opportunity for himself to say, okay, how can we help grow this? This now has my attention. I'm kind of passionate about this. And he jumped on board and started to develop this. And I think his father was like, no, 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 I, I like making cookies, but I don't know if I want this level of responsibility. So uh, my sister-in-law now, uh, Trevor's sister, she stepped in as head of baking and ah. kind of took over all the recipes and all of that. And so I say it's a series of events because it, it really is. Um, we started this cookie business and I hadn't fully jumped in yet because it wasn't a full-fledged business business. We were sure. out of the home kitchen. It wasn't like a, you know, huge pro production. Um, but as they started to grow and see the interest, the holidays came around. And at my parents' house, because they're business owners, they started to 
get the traditional co- um, corporate holiday gifts, you know, and, and because you're a business owner, you get a ton of corporate holiday gifts, but because you're a business owner, you also give a ton of holiday gifts and we're, do- we're doing it right now. Yep. Absolutely. Right, exactly. <laughs> this is the time. And so, but you know, one of the simple facts with that is that we're all busy. And if you're a business owner, you are busy. So a lot of the holiday gifts we noticed tended to manifest in the way of becoming gift baskets. And while those are really great and you enjoy them when you're a business owner and maybe you have, you know, 10, 20, 50, 200 gift gifts that you're sending out, of course, you're going to send a gift basket because it's convenient and you're busy in general and you want to send something nice. But when you're on the receiving end and you receive 10 or 20 gift baskets, there's only so many crackers you can have before you're like, okay, these are just going to sit on the counter and, you know, not collect dust. But it's it's meant to be a kind gesture. But on the receiving end, it doesn't. You're you're still eating them in June. That's right. 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 Or you're like, okay, kids. Dig in, figure yeah. out. You know, we're like the little scavengers and grabbing all the pretzels and things, and and it's not because it's not a, a nice gesture. It's just that it, do, it there's just so many of them, and it's all overload. Kind of, yeah, yeah. And it's the product yeah, we, of us all we being stopped busy. gift baskets a long time ago with our company. We do something very right. different, and yeah. people love it because That's it's. Right. It's not a gift basket. Yeah. That's so, yep. so, so that's so, where we came. And so we were awesome. basically like, oh, this is our spot where we have an opportunity now to different to actually find a space in not being a cookie company, but being a gifting company. And so that's what really drove the growth and and um Everything else moving forward was made on that decision, which was how do we do packaging that is customizable? Because corporate gifting, how do you stand out? Well, putting your logo or putting the recipient's name or putting their logo or any of that, you know, that helps look like you went the extra mile, but also with the simplicity of ordering a gift basket so that it's not so complicated that you then end up ordering a gift basket again. So that's really what drove us forward into developing the company to where it is today. And so it was just a very interesting journey um, with a lot of missteps, but uh, that's kind of where we got today. <laughs> cool. So you, no, I, I want to, there's something you mentioned in there that I don't want to lose track of. And that was when your father-in-law said, well, wait, I, you know, I like, I'm paraphrasing here, but he essentially yeah. said, I like my hobby of cookies. I don't want it to be my job. And <laughs> instead of just putting the brakes on, you did something that's really difficult for new business owners to do, and that is you delegate it. So, well, yeah. wait a minute. We still have everything we need. We're just not going to have you doing the work. No problem. We'll delegate that off to her. And she, you know, took it and right. ran with it and all that good stuff like that. There's a huge value in that there, because if you don't have the passion to do it as a business you it, it won't succeed or it's very difficult to have it succeed. You need to want to take the action that will get you to the point of success. And so you just found somebody else. I mean, it's Absolutely. really brilliant, but that's, that's often where things stop is the wait. I don't want to make this my job. It's like, wait, 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 you don't have to like, he was retired. He presumably financially, he didn't need the cash flow from the business right out of the gate. So, it, you know, you, you had some flexibility built into the equation there. It's really smart. Really smart. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And I think it's um, it was and and don't get me wrong. Obviously, those were a lot of conversations that happened because, of course, we're like, you know, this we had to convince someone why this might be a good idea, because you're talking to somebody who already did his time. He's like, hey, yeah, right. work. I'm <laughs> right. ready to back you guys. What are you trying right. to do here? And right. But we were fortunate enough that um, my sister in law, Andy, she did really quickly jump in and say, I think that this is something, if you guys are building this, this is something I would like to be a part of. And she is fantastic at you know, not only taking the reins from dad and and helping with those recipes, but then it, it's not even just the uh, taking that taking the reins on, which you can find, but she was very passionate about staying true to his recipes while also having the 
the interest in and dedication to scale up, right? Because we're not making right. 12 cookies at a time. And that's yes. a totally yes. different animal that we, none of us were prepared for. None of us had that experience. And so she was able to take that on too. And so we, of course we're super grateful. And then of course cool. uh, their father is excited because this has become a, you know, true and true family company. That's, that's great. great. And yeah, really size smart. The- it's, Sorry, go ahead, Jordan. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say the size of the ovens <laughs> must have grown exponentially, right? <laughs> oh, my. So, okay, yeah. So we started in, in the home kitchen, and then as we started to grow, we – actually renovated a different, I feel so bad for his parents. Um, we actually renovated a different part of their house into another kitchen. Um, and poor mom was like, I did not sign up for this guys. No, but she, uh, but, but at the same time, then once we outgrew that, my husband then found a commercial kitchen space that was not a commercial kitchen space. We made it into one and having no experience in baking, he, you know, I remember taking duct tape and putting it on the ground and mimicking what a freezer would look like or an oven or how to walk through the space without having a space because we've never done it before. And those ovens are quite a bit different. You know, we've got, she could speak to this. I want to say it's like, you know, 20 racks or something like that, that all go in at one time and it lifts them up and rotates them. So everything is baked evenly. It's a whole. Yeah, I could imagine. (laughs) Yeah. So, okay. I want to talk about uh, the family aspect working, you know, and it's not just working with your spouse, right? Because you've got your sister-in-law and everything. Dave and I have worked with our spouses for years. We always like, you know, hearing, uh, you know, from other people that have done that kind of thing and talking about the benefits and challenges that come with working, not just with your spouse, but with your family. Have you had to create you know, systems to help you overcome those kind of challenges? Uh, or did it just all naturally fall in place? Uh, you know, oh, that- <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. So who, who has answered that it naturally <laughs> falls in place? That's what I no one. <laughs> Liars. That's why, do. That's why yeah. I always kind of be like, uh, <laughs> no, it's, um, you know what it, it absolutely has on a, on a bunch of different levels. I mean, if you take one, just Trevor and I alone as just spouses, um, I, I've never actually experienced, you know, a lot of people have asked, uh, you know, how do you work with your spouse? Or they make kind of jokes about it. Um, I can't imagine not working with him. And I know that sounds kind of silly, but no, don't get cool. me wrong. There's not, there's not, it's not like it's all smooth and we're not stressed sometimes or dealing with things. But at the same time, you know, the idea that my whole day, I could go my whole day and then come home and I'm like, I haven't seen you all day. And the, I love the idea to build, to build this thing together. And so, you know, most, we don't really have too many issues working together in regards to just like, oh, we see each other too much. But I think for the whole family in general, um, there is a bit of, you have to be mindful about making, Time one, um, you know, we used to joke in the the beginning stages because uh, sometimes, like, somebody would be like, "Oh, you only talk. We only talk about work at dinner," and it's like, "Well, that's what we're doing," you know, and that's what you're passionate about day in day out, and that's pretty normal. Um, but on like a family and a significant other side, some of the things that you know, Trevor and I have definitely worked to is uh, making sure we have date night, which sounds ridiculous because we see each other all day, every day, but it's not a date night where we don't talk about work because I think no matter what, when you're passionate about something and you're involved in something, you're going to talk about work, but it was, let's actually mindfully go somewhere and spend time together because it is so easy when you are giving everything you have to be, to work all day and then get home. And then maybe you turn on the TV, but then you're on your phone answering emails or, you know, and then all of a sudden you have spent all day every day with your spouse and not spent any time with your spouse. And it's a very strange thing I wasn't necessarily point. Yeah. prepared for, you know. And so we definitely are still trying to do that. And the same with, you know, all of the family. And then additionally, there is that layer of complexity with family, uh, whether that's one sibling or all the siblings or a, a spouse of communication. And, you know, there's a you the ones you love are are the closest to you which means they see the most stressed out that you are or or you're able to really like vent in times of you know and this goes for anybody right this is anybody in any walk of life usually your best friend or your mom or somebody they're going to hear 
the stress that you have or the venting that you have that other people don't hear because they're the closest to you and you feel vulnerable enough that you can do that. But on the flip side, those are also your coworkers. So when you're stressed, usually the person that you can be a little bit more direct with is now your sibling that you're being direct, you know, like it's so it's it kind changes, of like, it changes how you communicate with them. Right. Right. So it's yeah. definitely, that is a learning process because now every family meeting is a family meeting and a business meeting. And it becomes, you know, a little bit more, uh, there's just extra layers of complexity to it. So we're always working on that. I think just like any family working on communication, any family working together is always working on communication and making sure that everyone understands um, that they're respected and valued. And sometimes that the people that you love the most, that can fall by the wayside because you're busy. And the people that are not as close to you, you have to make sure you do that. So we've definitely really tried to like mindfully recognize each other um, rather than just kind of let the other people hear the the stressed parts, if that makes any sense. Yeah, no. Do you does. ever do you ever compartmentalize the business stuff out of the way? Like, do you have rules like this dinner we're not going to talk about business or, or or whatever that might be, just to keep it under wraps? Or is that are you just more working on the perpetual balance of it? Um, I think it, it probably just depends on who you ask, to be honest. So I know when we first started. Um, that was very common that somebody, you know, would say, oh, can we not talk about, uh, work tonight? And that's, it is fine. But if that's what you're doing all day, every day, and all of you are doing it all day, every day, yes, you can talk about like Justin Bieber for like five minutes or, you know, but at the, at the same time, you don't, you, you're talking about what you're passionate about, or you're talking about what you want to tackle next. So of course we talk about non-work related things too, but I think when you get together with anybody, usually you're like, what's going on with you? You know, how's school or how's work? And you end up hearing about work. In this case, we just all talk about work because we all, and we all work together. So um, we definitely talk about other things, but I don't think we put too many rules on it. Yep. Um, we might hear crickets for a minute, <laughs> but that's only because, uh, you know, <laughs> I think okay. we all yeah. really want this to work and and yeah. and to grow it. And so uh, there's different parts of it we talk about more than others or, so, you know, something like that. But it's it's pretty hard to uh, tame. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it becomes, you know, your lifestyle. I mean, and right. you're speaking about it. My kids have grown up with us talking about it. And I think, you know, I would like to think anyway, uh, you know, they've learned from it and how we we're solving problems or talking about all oh, this, that, and the other thing, uh, you know, or that happened at, at the office. Um, so yeah, I, I, I see your point. It's a challenge not to discuss it a, a lot uh, for sure. Yeah, I definitely try. I think we try to obviously talk about other things, but I think we just try not to put too many like rules on it or, you know, or anything like that, because it, it's almost like one of those when you tell people not, to think about something, all you're going to think yeah, about is that thing yeah. or something like uh, that. But yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So you got you get everything going. You've had some success. You know, what are were some of the obstacles that got in your way of of that success, and and how did you overcome them? Oh, um, well, I think obstacles that got in the way of our success. Uh, that's it's interesting because I think some of the pivotal moments, and one I kind of touched on when we first started was the realization of of who we are as a company. Because when you tell our backstory and this, you know, lengthy journey of how we got to where we are, it sounds like we just woke up one day and we're like, we, oh, we're a gifting company. But there was, it was actually a challenge to make that kind of revelation that we are not a cookie company. And I think part of that, in getting there, it took us a while of, of trying to figure out like, why isn't this working or what, what are we doing wrong with our branding or our advertising? And, you know, how are we speaking to our audience? And I think part of that was the not realizing that we are talking for a while, we were talking to our potential clients, like we're a cookie company, which is different. That's a, you know, if you're buying, not that it's necessarily Oreos, but there's a difference between impulse buying you know, stuffed cookies for yourself because they looked really good on Instagram and they look really good on Instagram. But there's a difference between that kind of product, which is amazing and has its own space and buying a gift for someone else 
for some strategic reason, whether that is either telling them happy birthday or that is prospecting for your business to grow your business. And those are different. So the the messaging to your clients or your prospective clients looks different. The advertising looks different. And so that was a lot of stumbling. Um, One of the big things that I think was a huge moment for us also was in our packaging in itself. Um, When we started We were a gifting company and uh, so we, or I mean, not when we very started, but when we started and realized, you know, this is where we're going to live in this space, we created these gift boxes that we love. And, you know, one of them is this beautiful rigid white box and it's got a magnetic closure and it's very cool. But just like uh, flowers, for example, you can order flowers and you can order them just as flowers, or you can order the upgraded vase, or you can get the specialty vase, you know, like there's different kind of tiers. We thought, well, we have our cookies and our cookies are amazing, but we want a really great box, but we probably need another box because there's probably different types of gifts. There's the birthday gift, and then there's the holiday gift. And that's when you usually spend a little bit more on your clients or your, you know, loved ones. It's a a little bit more of a spend. So we need a higher tier for our gifts. So what we did is we created these beautiful wooden slide top boxes, kind of like a cigar box style, you know, that um, that had our branding also just on the lid etched onto it. And so it kind of um, it kind of demanded a higher price point and it made sense. OK, you could buy this uh, smaller box in like the white beautiful box. Um, and you could buy that and it's full color and pretty, and that's, you know, $30, or you could buy the upgraded wood box for 50 or 60, depending on how big they are. So that made sense to us. And when we started selling them, nobody bought the wooden boxes, like like zero (laughs) people. And we, we actually got to a point in 2018 where we did a full photo shoot for for the upcoming year for 2018 we did full photo shoot beautiful cookies everything we didn't photograph a single wood box because we were pulling that from our line we were not it wasn't selling so what's the point in you know trying to force that down people's throats um t- no pun intended um so uh <laughs> they so we pulled it from the line didn't do any professional pictures of it and then we had a meeting with a company locally, and we're local to Phoenix, Arizona, and we had a meeting with a company there that was interested in doing client gifts. And we brought both styles of box. And as we were leaving, the man we were meeting with just kind of stared at the wooden box for a while. And you could tell he was thinking. And then he just looked at us and he said, can you put my logo on this box? And it was such a dumb aha moment. But my husband, of course, you know, we're hungry for for sales. We're trying to grow. And he, he is not one to say no. He's one to say, let me figure it out. And so he said, can I have a couple of weeks to figure this out? And a couple of weeks later, we had a laser etching machine in our building. And we are, instead of, what we re- failed to realize is nobody wants a wooden box with our logo on it. Right. They want wooden box with their logo on it. And we yeah, were yeah, yeah. So- that's worth, that's, your your logo is not worth $20 a box to me, but my right. logo and, is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And we're like, how did we miss this moment? But <laughs> we were, a, a huge point for us is turnaround time. We're not interested in outsourcing um, gift boxes so that when people buy gifts, And I often equate this to flowers, and that's only because I equate it to flowers in the sense of when you're buying it, it's for a purpose or for a holiday, and you want it now. You don't want to say, I'd like to buy this gift in three weeks. So we're not interested in having really lengthy turnaround times. So we ended up getting laser machines in-house. We ended up ordering a lot of new lids because we had no use for those ones. And we just do in-house customization. And I like... Uh, almost curse, but um, I will tell you what uh, we our sales changed dramatically. Not only did they, of course, increase, but the wooden boxes were a hit, and we almost removed them completely. And it wasn't; it was just a failure to pivot a little bit or see it through a different lens, rather than just we were thinking, oh, either people want this or not. And I think that was a it was an obstacle or just like a 
blind spot, I guess, that, cool. you know, when we when we saw it, it really tremendously changed the trajectory of our company and where we we're heading. I often right. say you don't want to necessarily let your customers drive what you're doing with your business. I, I mean, it, you need to have things that are valuable to your customers, but sometimes that means not having everyone as a customer, but having the right people as customers. Mm -hmm. However, listening to everything that is said to you, even if you're going to throw it out, you know, put it through your filter. And if it resonates like this one clearly did, you know, the moment he said it, you had this aha moment. It's like, ah, okay. Like, yes, let's do that. Like, it's okay to listen to your customers. You don't have to do everything they ask, but do process everything they ask. And Absolutely. it can be valuable. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's a, it's just a balance between, um, you know, you don't want to tell all your customers what they want, but you also don't want to force it down their throats. It's just kind of a, I want to listen to what our customers are saying. So we know the direction that we're traveling and that has helped us understand like what kind of path do we want to carve, but you still want to stay true to your brand or your vision or your mission, whatever that is, because, you know, for some people that might that might be a non-negotiable and that will right. dictate whether they're successful or not, if people want that or not. But if you have that flexibility in marrying the two visions of what you foresee for your company and then what, how it solves a problem for your clients, then it's a win-win. That's really great. So looking at, uh, you know, your marketing material, your website, one of the things that, that I loved was this comment, you know, it says good cookies, save marriages, friendships, and lives. Uh, T tell us where that came from and, and the impetus behind that. Probably a little bit of my snarky attitude, but <laughs> I, uh, I, I think we, you know, we definitely, uh, we like to be playful with our sure. messaging in general, but at the core of this, I think it's just more of a nod to relationships, right? So we are a family owned company and our business is not just in others' businesses and growing them, but you're growing through them through developing relationships. And it's it's not it's even more than that because for us the core product was something that started with dad, right? It was the this cookie that brought everybody after the, you know, after like a, a game to the same place at the table right off the side of the field to enjoy cookies together and communicate or the same neighbors that are coming over or the same, um, the same colleagues that are all coming into the same uh, conference room to share cookies together that gets, gathers people together. That's making connections. That's making or connecting relationships that didn't necessarily exist before and ultimately growing everybody and lifting everyone up. So, you know, it sounds kind of silly on on one side of just like, oh, you're doing corporate gifts. But at the core, it's the reason people are doing that is for relationships. And and so we just think, you know, one, nobody wants crummy cookies. Nobody's sitting around at the conference room enjoying crummy cookies. So uh, so good cookies cool. help build those relationships. <laughs> and that's kind of where that came from. We like to be a little bit, you know, our messaging is a little bit sassy because yeah, we're a bunch great. of kids and uh, it's, well, we're not kids, but we're we're dad's kids. So sure. uh, we just like, like to it. have fun with it. But yeah, that, at the core, it's all about relationships and that's what we believe in yeah, and, and help with. Yeah, we talk about, uh, creating your own story here and uh, on the show all the time and how you have the choice. So you could choose to be, Oh, we're just, you know, yeah, we're just another gift box thing, but no, no, no. You know, this, this product brings people together and relationships and, th and that's a way better story. It's interesting, not only for your customers, but for you uh, and your employees. That That's, that's really cool. So, uh, you know, I love hearing about everything that, that works well and I appreciate, you know, you've been real upfront with that. We always ask a question of all our guests about, you know, mistakes because we're such big fans of them here on the show. Uh, I've made so many, I don't think Dave has made any, but, uh, <laughs> we, we love to look back on them and, and talk about what we've learned. Is there something that you would say was, would be your best mistake, something that stuck with you, taught you a valuable lesson as a business owner? <laughs> um, so, okay. So I think, okay, the lid thing, I love that mistake or that yeah. learning opportunity. First of all, I've said this before, but our motto, like our, our company slogan should be, it was a learning opportunity because the amount of times we've had to say that for our mistakes has been beyond counting, but oh, we call mistakes tuition here. It, it's, it's how, yeah, we're on the same wavelength. No problem. Yes. Yeah. So we've definitely made our share of like, 
you know, mistakes or, and, and that, and that part of that is just nobody in our company has had experience one with food or manufacturing or any of this at this scale. So we have learned everything. Uh, I want to say the hard way, but we just, we have learned it through uh, immersion. And uh, I think one of the best or one of the mistakes we've made over and over and over, which I guess has accumulated to our best mistake, would be don't do things the cost effective way because it will not be the cost effective way. If you do something the cheap way, you will end up paying more than what the expensive way was. And I say that in uh, various ways from uh, machinery, equipment, to website development. Um, You know, there's so many times we cut corners because in all fairness, you're a small company, you're trying to save money, you're trying to get out there. And we, we did that so many times. And what would happen is it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be good. And it would, whatever it was, whether it's our website or our equipment and it breaks down. And then, so not only did you spend the money on it, but now you have to spend the money to buy the thing that you didn't want to spend the money on in the first place. So you've spent even more money. And I think that's, that's one of the biggest things that we did um, overall in just constantly because we were just so small trying to keep everything tight and it ended up making us go back and redo things over and over and over. Yeah, I think that's great advice. And I think we've all been there. I mean, when you first time you look at like, you know, uh, building your website and you're like, well, you can spend, you know, 500 bucks or 50,000 bucks, <laughs> you know, what right. do you, what's in between and what you should do it. So yeah, I think that's great. So What's on the the future path for NOMS? I mean, are you just hustling to grow as large as you can? Are you focusing on being more efficient? What, what's the priorities for 2021 once we get through this, uh, the longest year in history of 2020? The strangest year. Yeah. <laughs> so um, all of the above in a way. I mean, I think I'm so proud of our team and what's come together for us in regards to I just the growth that we've we've had uh, year over year, but then also just seeing the the roles the roles that we have within the company and people really coming into them and owning their departments. It just it's almost like we're a real company. No, I just but it just feels like before it was just this family owned company, and now it's it just it's really becoming real. And so, of course, in doing that and having everyone just master their own departments, we are becoming more and more efficient. Um, all the time. And we are, and so that part is definitely always on the table. We're always looking to grow and get our name out there now that we are more efficient. Now that our website is up and running, we just want people to know that, you know, we're not a local Arizona business. We ship nationwide. We can produce thousands of gifts if you're needing them. You know, we are, we have scaled up and built this in a way that we can take on you know, the whole nation. And that's what we're aiming for. But in addition, we are always listening to our customers. And we're also thinking of ways that we can, you know, improve and innovate our products. So of course, we're going to continue to introduce new cookie flavors or brownies or things like that, um, that are natural for the actual product, you know, in, in the gift box itself. But we're also looking to really continue to let our clients who are now established clients, for, or many of them are established clients who have been using our gift boxes for years. How do we make them now stand out as more people use our gift boxes? So, you know, we are looking to a lot of different technology um, innovations within our website. So for example, right now we, we've implemented something really cool where when the recipient of a gift box gets their cookies, there's a little... Um, little insert in there that gives them instructions on how to send a thank you like video or a video or audio clip or whatever to the the recipient. They just enter in the order number and they say, you know, hey, Dave, thank you so much for these cookies. It was amazing. Uh, Absolutely love them. And they can even send like a video of the cookies and things like that. And that's that's really cool for the corporate world because yes, you would tell your mother, thank you for sending cookies. But in the corporate world, they don't always get that response. And so prompting them, it really closes the loop with the sender and makes them feel like, wow, this is this is really cool. This is working and it made them happy. And then additionally, yeah, of course, 
We're trying to move forward with doing really cool stuff like video boxes. When you open up mm. the gift box and having that video, which is amazing for corporate, if you're doing any kind of either, either well, web events right now, because we're not doing a lot of in-person, but web yeah. events or um, invitations to events or prospecting where you say, hey, Shannon, it would be amazing to connect with you. You know, I, I hope you enjoy these cookies, you know, something like that, where it's, it's just got a little bit more warmth to it because it's even more uh, personable. And so we're just always looking to elevate the game in that way. And and that's what we've got on the docket for 2021. Yeah, I love that. The, the, the connection and the relationship part of your whole concept, I think, is just so powerful. It's really great. So one of the things we really believe uh, action is so critically important, so much so that we like to uh, think of the term small business that it really should be a verb, you know, not not a, a noun. So if you could recommend, you know, one action item that you could share with our small business owner listeners that are out there right now, what do, what do you think that would be? Something that would they could do today to help them be more successful? Um, okay. So I guess this is tough because it's, it's definitely dependent on the business itself and, and the size sure. in regards to if you're independent or not. But I would say um, take a second. And I know this kind of goes back to what we said earlier about listening, but listen to your people. And what I mean by that is that can look like listen to your people internally, because you might have a staff and it might be five people or 10 people or even larger, but but take inventory of, of who's who's sitting where, um, of your culture, of because one of the things that I think that we've we've noticed is we have such great people in our company. And sometimes we've even not, I wouldn't say we've ever necessarily thought we didn't have great people, but if something's not working, I think sometimes you think it might be a person, but you might have the right person in the wrong seat and they might thrive in a different seat or, you know, sometimes things that aren't actually broken. It's that you can just do some tweaking and it really does elevate everybody within the company. Um, We have so much talent internally that we have developed from people that did not have those skills necessarily when they were hired. Maybe, you know, for example, our production uh, department, our, I call her our laser queen. Um, she was hired to be an admin. She had zero experience on that, but we recognized within our company a a person who was passionate about the company and the people and loved being there. And we were so excited to develop her and develop her skills rather than say, oh, you're not, you know, you have no experience with that, you know, and that's not always feasible in every way, but listening to your people in the client side and what they're needing, what problem, what problem do you want to solve for them? But what is their real problem? You know, rather than forcing that that vision, you know, down people's throats, what is, listen to what their pain points are and see what you can do about that, even if that means pivoting a little bit. So I think it's just being a little bit nimble and and uh, and flexible to pivoting, whether that's internally or with your clients. I think it really, just like our gift boxes with the lids, it's such a small change that just dramatically shifted everything for us. And you'd be surprised because when you're so close to something, it you can't actually see the full picture, even if you think you can. And so it's a it's it's definitely been a, a unique experience for us growing this company. But your people, whether they're internally or externally, they're your biggest, most valuable asset and they're gonna help you get where you want to go. Yeah. And as a small business when you're just you're like running constantly it Taking that, it, it may sound like it's not an action, but stopping mm-hmm. so maybe some of the other actions that are going on so you can listen to your team and listen to your customers, I think is is great advice. So Chelsea, you know, thank you for coming on the show again. Uh, some really great lessons here. I'm really excited to, about your business. I can't wait to try your cookies. Uh, but what's the best way for our listeners to connect with you and to learn more about Nom's Bake Shop? Absolutely. So our website is getnoms.com. So just like you give noms and you get noms. So at getnoms.com, we're actually just an online bake shop and we ship nationwide. So you can go on there and kind of check out the cookies. You can see the gift boxes. You can even upload your own 
logo or art or photo or anything like that directly on the box and check check out. Um, but if you had questions or anything like that, we can we do everything in house and we could develop designs for you or give you mock ups of of what a box would look like with your design. And then if you're looking just for inspiration or pictures of really good cookies, we're of course on Facebook and then we're also on Instagram at Get Noms. And uh, we're always there. You can send us messages and ask questions or uh, just uh, look at all the beautiful pictures of cookies. But yeah, there's a lot of inspiration of gift boxes and things like that on there too. Nice. That's, that's wonderful. Well, you know, again, thank you again. Uh, you know, some great information. Please, you know, keep in touch, come back and, uh, you know, keep us posted on how things are going. Thank you so much for having me. I had a lot of fun. And I want to eat some cookies. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm hungry, man. <laughs> <laughs> but they're not in the cookie business, right? They're, they, That's the I, thing. What I, re- I'm, I really am impressed that they're during their evolution, that, you know, Chelsea and Trevor and the team, that they realized, you know, we're really in the gifting business. And, and even above that, you know, we're in the relationship business of connecting people. Yeah. That's they get that's customer service, right? Like just it. like we were talking about at the beginning. Like they understand yeah. they're in the customer service business because yeah. every business is in the customer service business. So yeah. Yeah, the cookie is a vehicle <laughs> it to is. Con- you know, out there, but they could just as well be selling, you know, uh, you know, homemade chocolate or something else. But it's cookies, just, are cookies are good vehicles though, man. It. Yeah, I, I oh, can, I'm not gonna lie to you here. Yeah. I, I liked I, I, her I, I liked her comment about her parents being business owners, you know, it's one two world domination. Like th- that is it. It, like like you were saying earlier, right? Like it there's less risk than you think. And once yep. you've learned that and sometimes the most of the time the only way to learn it is to have done it already and be like, "Oh yeah, why was I holding back?" Like there's yeah. Uh, yeah. Like and the why parents, not try. Yeah. Yeah, and I love, you know, the typical entrepreneurs like you could make a business out of that. You yeah. know, <laughs> you, you're always thinking of these kinds of opportunities because you've done it, you've had some success at whatever level and yeah. uh, you're encouraging every everyone else around you and I, I think it's just a great story and oh, it's she good. sounds really excited about it which brings uh a great energy to everyone else out there. And I know that uh, it's true. She is more valuable to this company than she probably realizes just because of, like you said, her energy, her natural default state is to be out there doing this, right? Talking about the company. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good. I I also like the, you know, how her, uh, well, her husband's family needed to recalibrate their perception of a good cookie. Because they yeah, were used to it, right? Like the yeah. product was was so ingrained in their lives, they didn't realize they even had something that was marketable, let alone wanting to do it. Like the two are very yes. separate. But like somebody else came in and was like, whoa, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> like you should make a business out of this. And listening to those people, you know, it's that kind of thing where I was saying before, you don't always want to take every bit of advice or suggestion or anything like that, but you want to let them all in because occasionally there will be one that resonates with you and then you run with it. And and I look at those as, and this is just me, you know, focusing on me. When somebody sends in an idea that resonates with me, I say, oh, wait, that was my idea. They just crystallized it before <laughs> I did. But, yeah, but there's some good. truth to that, right? Like sure. when it resonates, it's, it, it means that you were thinking about it, but perhaps not in the right way. And now you get to go. So, yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's really good. Great stuff. We hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, uh, please, you know, jump on whatever podcast uh, directory or app you're using and leave us a review to share your honest feedback so we can get more people to uh, benefit and we can bring the charmed life of small business owners to uh, even more of you out there. Absolutely. That's uh, that's what we have for today. Thanks for joining us and sticking with us through episode number 300. And feel free, if you haven't been here for all 300, go back and look at the ones that resonate with you and listen to the ideas of yours that other people have already had and then take them and turn them into uh, actions for your small business. And that's that's how we do it. Have a good one. Have fun. Be careful. Stay safe. Keep living that charmed life. 